Ah, this breaks. Gotta love it. Is this little thing maybe the best camera for us cyclists? Let's find out together. My name is Michael and welcome to Klein Concept. So earlier this week I purchased this camera off of uh, Amazon and it just arrived a couple of days ago and I bought it in the first place to really use it to document my rides, the routes, the streets, but also just to do a little bit of like talking head video to it uh, while I'm out on the bike. A good friend of mine, Rob, hey Rob, um, already borrowed me his DJI Action 3 camera. For me, I gotta say, as much as I like the camera in the first place, I somehow was very curious about this form factor because it is symmetrical. So of course, if you basically just clip it underneath your handlebars, you have an aesthetically pleasing image of something that's very symmetrically even um, sitting underneath your handlebars. While with the Action 3 or pretty much with any other action camera like a GoPro, you always have the lens offset to a side. So first of all, the footage that it generates is always a little bit offset, but also just aesthetically when you're looking at the bike, you have this thing with this big lens that's kind of not really centered. So I wanted to give this one a try, even though it is older than the DJI Action 3. So just in regards to expectation management, what this video is not going to be, it's not going to be the side-by-side -side comparison of the, the DJI Action 2 side-by-side -side with the Action 3, where we can uh, basically film the same footage and pixel peep. Uh, I think those videos might already exist, so I know they exist on YouTube already. What I want to find out now, is this camera good enough for me? Like, I don't really care if there are other cameras that might be better. Um, I just really want to know, is this one uh, getting the job done? Yeah, so that's pretty much it. So it's going to be very, very focused on this little DJI action too. So which package did I get? I bought the package that also has this little screen as well. The cool thing about this is there is some internal storage on this unit. If you want to extend it, you either need the additional battery pack. So there's also a module like this with just being just a battery pack or this one, which also has the screen on it. And here you also have a slot for a micro SD card. The cool thing about these, it's a modular system, so they really just click together magnetically and you have little hooks on the side, which you can lift. So you have to lift them to basically detach them from each other again. Otherwise, if you don't lift them, nothing uh, is going anywhere here. The cool thing about the display module is, of course, you might, when you're talking to the camera, you might want to see yourself while you're talking, right? So this is the upside of doing this here. Otherwise, you pretty much just have the screen on the back and when you're filming yourself, you really don't really know how the frame looks like. What else did I get for this? I also bought a little um, a little case from Small Rig. So here you can pretty much insert the whole block of those cameras. Let me see and go. Lock it together here. And now you have a very rigid. So even if, if I don't know, you're filming with the camera in your hand, you're talking to it, somehow it slips out of your hand and falls on the concrete. I would hope it's not gonna damage the camera. But it didn't happen yet, so I can't really say anything about that. The cool thing about this little case here is that you have those little flaps on the side, which you can pop out and then basically just mount it into um, any kind of action cam or GoPro mount as well. Other than that, um, you have this little clip that you can mount underneath your handlebars and it's also magnetic and you see how nicely the camera the little camera module clips in here you can also clip it in together with the, the display module attached to it but it's kind of pointless to have a display module while the camera is mounted um, up front but if you have the display module on it uh, it extends the battery life quite a bit um, so maybe that could be an argument why you might want to have um, the display module attached as well, even if you have the camera mounted underneath your handlebars. So another cool thing about this camera, if you are interested in kind of like first person perspectives, is there is this little necklace thing, which you basically, you detach, there's a little magnet to it, you detach the magnet and then you put the necklace underneath your shirt or your jersey or whatever, like in this case, and you take the little magnet and you mount it right there. 
You see this little magnet sticking out underneath my shirt. The cool thing what you can do is you take, you take the camera module and it magnetically attaches to this and you have it mounted to your chest, which is uh, giving you a quite nice first person kind of perspective, a lower first person kind of perspective. So now I did run a couple of tests with this camera um, out on the road. I basically mounted it in this bracket because there's one very special um, kind of setup which I wanted to try out. Um, and I wanted to see if it can be somehow a production one-stop shop also in regards to audio quality as well. So the cool thing about this little small rig cage is that you have a cold shoe mount on the side and on the bottom and I mounted the Rode Video Micro on here and connected it with a little TRS and to TRRS and then a basically uh, a TRS to USB-C cable to the device just to see how audio sounds when you're using the external Rode mic. What I didn't do this time is I didn't put the wind muff on it or the DATCAD on it because I think that it will be reaching into the frame. So you'll see the dead cat because it is quite fluffy. So I think you would kind of have to use it without um, the wind protection. And that gives you pretty much uh, this kind of sound. But then of course I also compared it to um, the regular internal mics. So just detaching um, the external microphone because initially I was thinking that with the external mic, obviously you might get premium sound, um, but if, if I don't have to carry around uh, an additional microphone, that makes the setup even smaller, so it keeps it nice and compact, and you can just throw it in your back pocket or just keep it um, mounted underneath your handlebars. Um, so yeah, without the external mic, it actually sounded like this. Um, I'm using the internal microphone it's super windy, so I'm curious if you're actually seeing, I mean, you're seeing something, but if you're actually hearing anything. Other than that, it's nice that it's so light. Um, so yeah, if you can hear something, it might be close to the perfect cycling camera. So what I've been doing recently, there is an AI-based um, service or algorithm or whatever you want to call it by Adobe, uh, for speech enhancement. So what I've been doing is I've been uploading the audio track of my videos to Adobe and then downloaded the improved, I'll say, audio track, which is supposed to remove echoes, reverbs, wind noises, and these kind of things. Um, it also creates a couple of artifacts when there is wind noise and no speech, um, because I guess it thinks that somebody's talking and is trying to make up some weird words um but yeah running that windy audio through that algorithm makes it sound like this or the radius you could cover um i'm using the internal microphone it's super windy so i'm curious if you're actually seeing I mean, you're seeing something but if you're actually hearing anything and yeah i mean of course when buying an action cam um I couldn't say no to buying a beautiful uh, selfie stick as well, right? Uh, so don't judge me for that, but I thought, why not? You know, it was cheap and uh, I wanted to see what kind of angles I could get. So um, yeah, let me give you a, a short little demo of that. Now I'm here with uh, the selfie stick. Obviously, you look like a bit of an idiot, but hey, we gotta do this for the content, huh? So, yeah, half extended selfie stick. These are the angles, internal mic. Let me get you close to the road. So, you see there's another cyclist towing. He's obviously gonna have mad respect for me um, because I'm having this dope selfie stick in front of me. 
That's it. Let's give him a little head nod. You know, oh, so it's like this, luckily. Would it? Luckily, it was with somebody on a, on a scooter, you know, electric scooter. Big respect for him. So, uh, yeah. Let me extend the selfie stick a little bit more. Selfie stick, maximum extension. It looks even better doing this. Also, I mean, if you can judge from my shadow how great it looks. I'm like a tourist on a road bike, you know? Like I'm in Venice. Or stuff. Anyways, let me give you some angles. Like I'm coming back from fishing or something like that. Anyways, I'm looking forward to see how that footage looks like. Kind of fun doing this because there are no people around that can see me. So yeah, I think uh, you got to make the choice for yourself if you want to be riding out on your road bike with a selfie stick in your head or not. Even if I think undoubtedly the footage might be kind of worth it. But um, yeah, I leave it up to you. You kind of need to be made for uh, being fine with being that person having a one meter stick holding one meter stick in front of you while you're riding your bike potentially with your friends and potentially with some people that you meet for the first time on a group ride so i'll leave it up to you other than that obviously out of the action cam like this i was looking for very stable footage so dji has recently released a firmware update for this camera which while you're recording the camera is recording um data from the gyroscope, the internal gyroscope in this. And um, this allows you to take the video footage from the camera and load it up into a free software called Gyroflow. And what this does is pretty much, it takes your video file, it takes the gyro data, and it matches the movement that the camera detected. So all the shakes and all the moves and starts compensating um, the video accordingly. And what you get in the end out of it is a very stable, smooth file. So what I did, I just did a very quick run um, here down down the hill. Once with uh, the internal stabilization and then once with uh, processing it in Gyroflow. And here are the results. And uh, yeah, you can make up your own mind if you think that it's worth putting in that extra step of basically processing the video afterwards on your computer. So if you've already done a little bit of research on this camera, you might know already that there is one major issue with this little thing, and it is about overheating. So especially when you film in 4K, this little camera overheats quite quickly. It depends if for you it actually is quite quickly or if you actually might not notice because your clips are gonna be shorter anyways. So I've been running a couple of tests. I've been um, testing this with 4K, um, and 48 frames per second because most of the videos that I'm uh, doing ending are ending up being 24 frames per second so I wanted to have a multiple of that and I've been able to shoot continuous clips basically between four and five minutes. Um, what I have to add to that it's still not super warm here um, I would say it's maybe around 20 degrees inside um, this is where I was doing the the overheating test um, so the clips ended up being between four to five minutes they obviously gonna be shorter than that if you end up using it um, on a beach where it gets direct sunlight, or it might be longer if you actually have this clipped to your bike and it's getting a lot of wind um, that might help with the cooling as well. I know that there are also a couple of cases um, also just for this little thing, like similar to the Smart Rig case, which I think is also in general helping a little bit with cooling it. Um, but there are also small cases which basically just house this little module um, and they help to basically cool this down and also extend the recording time a little bit. Why did I go up here again? Oh, I gotta live here. Okay. See you at home. Overall, bottom line, I gotta say, I really, really like this camera. Uh, I'm definitely gonna keep it. I'm gonna take it out on my rides. I like the quality. It's definitely good enough. It's maybe even better than what I need in general. 
I also think that I will not connect the external mic to it. Um, even with the dead cat, um, there might be an option to place it somehow that uh, you don't see the fluff in frame, but then you still have like this thing, this microphone sticking out. Um, and I think the way how uh, it isolates the wind uh, in itself, I think is uh, good enough for me, especially when I run it through that um, Adobe algorithm. I also noticed that when I had the camera in the small rig case, I think it shielded the case itself, shielded the mics a little bit better. So you've been getting slightly less wind noise on it. Um, so that basically further improved the audio quality of that as well. So yeah, I would say that this is pretty much it uh, for this little video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions in regards to the camera, if there's anything you want me to um, try out, if there's anything that I missed, um, which you think might be interesting, let me know, put it down in the comments. I'll try to follow up on that because, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be taking out this camera a lot now. Um, it's just been on the first ride with me so far. So um, yeah, more updates, hopefully coming soon. With that, I'll say thanks a lot for watching. And uh, if you enjoyed this, please maybe consider hitting that like and subscribe button because it helps me out a lot. It pushes it up to the YouTube algorithm gods. So yeah, I would say with that, I say uh, thanks a lot. Wish you a nice evening, a good day, or a good morning in case this is the very first video you're watching while still being in bed. So um, yeah, I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.